Hi, everyone, and welcome to our session, Who Owns Digital, Digital Transformation? My name is Tom Trainer. I'm the CMO at Treasure Data, and we serve over 400 customers globally with our enterprise customer data platform. I'm excited to introduce today's presenter, Don Peppers. Don Peppers is a best-selling author, blogger, business strategist, and widely acclaimed keynote speaker who has traveled to over 40 countries talking about customer member experience, customer and member experience. His latest book, Customer Experience, What, How, and Why Now, provides insights and how-to recommendations for building and maintaining a truly customer-centric business. Also joining us today is Louise Gama, Senior Global MarTech Manager for Customer Data at Anheuser-Busch InBev. AB InBev is a Treasure Data customer who leverages our customer data platform for digital transformation, excellent customer experience, and global customer data management. So for some quick housekeeping, an on-demand version of this webinar will be available immediately after the presentations, so share with your colleagues. And feel free to click and download the attachments below your screen. Lastly, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions during or after today's session, please submit them below, and we'll do our best to answer them. So Don, thank you, and welcome, and Louise, and uh, Don, take it away. Well, well thank you very much, Tom. Uh, and you know, we're gonna be talking about uh, the digital transformation, and of course, uh, there, there isn't a single company on earth probably that isn't trying to transform itself into more and more digital uh, forms. Um, uh, and we're gonna talk about the role of customer data. I wanna share a few slides first. So let me just share my slides. And Okay, so we're talking about who owns digital transformation. And uh, this is us, this is uh, Don, Luis, and Tom. Uh, and let me just talk to you about what I really think is, is going on uh, in, in the business world. Uh, it's being driven by Moore's Law. Everyone has heard of Moore's Law. You've all read probably more than you want to about Moore's Law, but it's still in effect. Uh, every 20 years, computers get a thousand times more powerful. They get smaller, faster, cheaper, better. Um, uh, there's more power in your smartphone on your person than was available to the entire NASA organization to put a man on the moon uh, uh, in, in the late 60s and 70s. Uh, and because of Moore's Law, there are, there are three principal technologies that have really been developed um, uh, for businesses. One is the database. I can store names and addresses and details of individual customers. Uh, even if I have a million customers, I can call out one customer at a time. I don't have to run to a file room and pull out a file folder. I just call it up on the computer. The other is interactivity itself. Uh, we, we are always interact. You could probably think of the number of times that you're offline today more than the number of times you're online, right? You're online all the time. Uh, and and we have the ability to digitally configure our services one customer at a time. We can mass customize uh, how we treat individual customers. So we can make sure that the customer A sees a particular website that promotes a certain product because that's what customer A looked at last time. And because of Moore's Law, customers are different. Customers are different. First of all, they're, they're completely informed all by themselves because of interactivity. You know, it used to be that customers, in order to really find out about a product, that they had to look at the advertising for that product. No more. A customer can go online, find out what other people say about the product, uh, can look at the product itself. Um, uh, they're informed. They, they have way more information power today than they had in the 20th, 20th century. Uh, and they demand real-time interactions with the company they buy from. Think about that. Your customers want to be able to interact with you immediately. All companies, to be legitimate companies, have to have a website. If you don't have a website, are, are you really a company? So they demand, they demand that you be available in real time. And for the business, what it means is that sales, service, and marketing functions, all these functions, all the customer-facing functions at a company are being digitally smashed together into what we call the customer experience. And this really represents a different dimension of competition. And there are two things you need to do to be able to compete. You have to be able to satisfy some need and you have to have, to have a customer who wants to have that need satisfied. Uh, if I can satisfy a customer's need, 
then I have a business. Um, well, I put these two things on a two-dimensional graph with customers reached across the horizontal and needs satisfied of the vertical. Traditional marketing in the 20th century all proceeded in the horizontal direction. A 20th century marketer developed a product that met a certain need, and then they taught it, tried to find as many customers as they could who wanted to have that need met with their product. And the definition of their market uh, uh, of their success was what market share did they develop with that product? Uh, so in this case, what we're trying to do is maximize the value created by each product. But because of these new technologies, database interactivity and mass customization, companies can now cost efficiently operate in the second dimension also. 21st century marketing is increasingly in the vertical dimension. I focus on one customer at a time. Even if I have millions of customers, I focus on one customer at a time and I try to find as many products and services and meet as many needs as I can for that customer. And uh, the height of that vertical bar, that's my share of customer. Now, when I use the term share of customer, it's important to realize I'm not saying share of wallet. I'm not talking about the share of the customer's spending. That vertical dimension, that's the customer needs satisfied dimension. That's how many needs of the customer are you satisfying? What proportion of the customer's life are you playing a role in? That's your share of customer. Can you find something more to do for that customer? Uh, is it something logical that you could do? Uh, and these two forms of competition, they don't really conflict with each other, do they? They're perpendicular, they're not, they're not opposite directions, they're perpendicular. The strategies that a business operates, uh, 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 strategies that a business implements to operate in the horizontal dimension, the, the uh, 20th, 20th century dimension, uh, they're different from the strategies that you adopt to operate in the vertical dimension. Every business ought to be operating in both of these dimensions. Okay, they should be trying to build their market share, but the easy, when, when they go to the trouble of acquiring a new customer, they should also try to improve their share of customer with that customer. Now, if you're a 20th century marketer, the way you build your market share is you assign people to focus on every product's attributes and benefits and you promote those products and benefits to the customer. You try to get more and more customers to realize that the product you have is unique and different and, and uh, has certain benefits and, and, and they should want to buy it. Um, but if you're, if you're practicing 21st century marketing in the vertical dimension, uh, you don't focus on the product's attributes and benefits, you focus on each customer. In fact, you focus on each customer's individual experience, okay? What's the customer's experience with your product, with your service, with the interactions they have? Now, there's one important difference here between these two dimensions of competition. I used to be in the advertising business, and we practiced 20th, 20th century marketing. We had uh, uh, unique selling propositions for products. We had uh, brand propositions and so forth. But you know, the quality of our marketing in the 20th century was a function of the quality of our advertising, specifically our advertising agency and the creative individuals there. The better the advertising, the better the marketing. And the advertising quality had nothing to do with product quality, fundamentally. In fact, we used to say uh, the fastest way to kill a bad product <laughs> is with good advertising. But in the customer dimension, you cannot, you cannot increase your share of customer if you don't have a genuinely attractive individual experience for that customer. It's impossible. You are linked to the customer's experience in ways that you aren't linked to the message you put out about the brand attributes and benefits. The problem with experience, of course, is you've got to define it. What do I mean when I say customer experience? And there are many different ways to define it. Um, I defined it in a way I think that uh, would be in agreement with many of the academics that are looking at this area. It's the totality of a customer's individual interactions with a brand over time. Uh, and each of the words in our definition means something important. When we use the word customer, we're talking not just about current customers, but also prospective customers. 
when a prospective customer comes to your website and they have a good experience or a bad experience, that's part of the customer experience. Individual interactions occur both face-to-face -face and via interactive media. A face-to-face -face interaction might be an interaction with the product itself uh, or the service, uh, or it could be with a person. Uh, interactive media is uh, online and, and web apps and, and uh, uh, mobile phone apps. Interactions with a brand means that uh, an interaction with others that you have about a brand really isn't part of the customer experience. It's important for me to know if you've talked about my product with your friends and relatives. I, I, I want to know that and I want to uh, I want to think about that in terms of what it means to your value to me or uh, or whatever. Um, but it's not part of the customer experience. I don't own that as a as a brand. I can't manage what you do there. Brand means all the selling entities, agents, sales clerks, dealers, partners, uh, anybody uh, who interacts with the customer in your name is part of your brand, even if you're not, they're not your employee. And uh, when we use the, time, the term over time, it recognizes that customer relationships are ongoing. String a few experiences together and you have a customer relationship. Okay. Competing in the customer dimension, it's complicated. It's very complicated because businesses have a product, they have product A, they have product B, they have product C, and each of these products has a product manager. And the product manager is held accountable for the sales and the profitability level of the product and getting the product to market and doing all that stuff. Um, but customers transcend each of these products. Customer one buys product A and C. Customer two buys uh, A and B. Customer three just buys A. Uh, and at most businesses, there isn't anybody in charge of each customer's experience. No one, technically, is in charge of customer three. Okay? Uh, there are people like the chief marketing officer or maybe the chief customer experience officer who are usually in charge of all the customers. Uh, but but not of individual customers. You can't you know uh, pull a string on a customer and figure out who at the company whose career lives and dies by that customer's share of customer and lifetime value. So it's it's pretty complicated. It's pretty complicated to to do this. And uh, uh, and across all these different products, you also have different functions. You still have the service function, the customer service function. You still have the marketing function and the sales function. And these functions operate independently also. And sometimes the customer itself isn't known um, uh, to different functions uh, in the same way. I want to transition to the COVID crisis. We call it the COVID crisis, but I'm showing you the growth rate in e-commerce over the last 10 years. Notice anything startling about that? Yeah. That's what happened in the COVID crisis in 2020. Uh, McKinsey says we had 10 years of e-commerce penetration inside of three months of the COVID crisis. And uh, the Commerce Department, it says that online retail sales now surpass offline sales for the first time ever. We are more digital today than we aren't, all right? And the COVID crisis has changed businesses' plans. 97% uh, of executives say that the pandemic sped up their digital transformations. 95% are searching for new ways to engage with customers individually. Um, and uh, almost 80% have increased their budgets for digital transformation. So digital transformation, it's a big deal these days, especially because of the COVID crisis. Uh, and I go back to my definition of the customer experience. I said it was a totality of interactions and e-commerce represents a, a large number of interactions. And these interactions come in a variety of different formats, different forms, uh, all, all these electronic interactions. So companies have compiled and are compiling a tremendous number of electronic interactions. They've got data galore on electronic interactions. Uh, and on top of these interactions, uh, they've, they've got systems that operate, applications, different applications operate. They have a uh, problem is when every system has its own customer data, no system will connect with any other system. 
which is why we're talking about it today. All right. You have uh, a marketing automation system. Okay. It incorporates uh, all the the data that's known about customers' recent interactions, and it automates the the next real time interaction for that customer. But you also have a customer support system. The customer support system or the customer success system, if you're in B2B, that support makes sure that the customer gets the most value out of every product. Um, uh, and, and, and in addition to customer support, uh, you have the uh, Salesforce automation system where you're, you're tracking uh, prospects and uh, prospective clients and you're automating the way sales uh, uh, occurs uh, and the uh, handoff of leads into the uh, uh, from the marketing into the sales system. You have the customer service system, which is different from customer support. It's when something goes wrong and people call in or they text you or they, they chat with you online. Somebody's got to man those customer service systems and they have their own uh, uh, data systems uh, uh, that support them. And, and and you have the digital marketing system, uh, which uh, determines, uh, how, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the right uh, strategy for a particular customer in, in digital digital channels. And, and you have the CRM system, which attracts customer relationships over time and updates the, the customer records. The problem with each of these systems is they each have their own definition of customer data unless you also have a customer data platform. A customer data platform unites all these different applications. And uh, if, you've, if you've installed the applications already and you don't yet have a CDP, <laughs> then uh, 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 the, the, the task of installing a CDP and unifying your, your customer data across the enterprise can be daunting. Um, customer data, you should think of customer data as the currency that could unite these different systems into a network from the very start. Um, a customer data generates a network effect when it unites all of a company's customer facing systems. You, you, there's a rule for this network effect that's called Metcalfe's Law. Metcalfe's law says that the value of each system increases in proportion to the square of the number of other systems it connects to. Step back a second and just think about uh, what we're talking about here. What I'm saying is that the value of your Salesforce automation tool and your marketing automation tool, the value of each of those tools goes up just by connecting them together. And, and uh, uh, if I have uh, three systems, uh, or four systems, it goes up exponentially. Um, Metcalf created his law for Ethernet, but uh, it would apply, let's say, to, to think about the fax machine, for instance. Okay? If, if, if there's only one fax machine out there, it has no value whatsoever. Uh, if there's two fax machines, it has a certain value. If there's three fax machines, then it has more value. And if there's four, uh, 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 it has uh, 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 four times as much value. Uh, and, and, and so, the more systems are out there, the more applications are connected to each other, uh, the more valuable each of your applications is. But if they don't operate on the same definition of customer data, then they're not connected. They really aren't connected. Or they may be connected through manual effort on your part. You may have to do things uh, uh, manually to make it work, uh, but they're not connected uh, uh, very easily. Um, when each system brings its own data, independent customer interactions aren't easily connected. Uh, customers have to re-enter data. They have to connect the dots all by themselves. Uh, and uh, sales, marketing, and customer service still can't talk to each other. When your systems, when your when when your systems and applications bring their own data, that's when you have a problem like the. Uh, small business client at a bank who is denied a credit card because he had a bad credit rating, even though he has a million dollars on, on balance with the bank, okay? Uh, or uh, uh, the, the caller who was on your website and trying to figure out how to solve a problem, couldn't solve a problem, spent 40 minutes on your website, he called in and the first thing he has to do is explain what he was doing on your website. He was already on your website and you don't know what he was doing. That's the problem that you get. 
uh, when each application, each system brings its own data. And lack of a common data currency imposes other costs on a company as well. Um, at one large enterprise with a, a global footprint, several different divisions, they all installed a Salesforce automation system provided by the same vendor, the same exact vendor installed, uh, you know, uh, uh, installed all these systems. But each division installing its system had its own unique business with different customer characteristics, different geography, different regulatory issues. Uh, <laughs> the result was a hodgepodge of different customer data protocols, as well as a significant security risk to the enterprise that had to be back engineered uh, with a massive uh, reintegration of all these systems. It would have been so much simpler had they simply started with a customer data platform. And then, and then each of their different divisions and services could install their own applications relying on that data platform and they would all talk together and it wouldn't have created a security risk. And that's what we're gonna be talking about uh, in today's uh, presentation. So next I'd like to introduce uh, Luis Gama. Uh, Luis, um, over to you, sir. Hello, everyone. First of everything, for me, it's an honor to be here with such talented people like, like Dom and my good partner, Tom, from Treasure Data as well. So just a little bit about my, my journey. Uh, I joined the Bing Bath uh, almost two years ago. I was working previously as an account service supervisor at Widen Kennedy, an advertising agency here from Brazil. And I have uh, IT and also advertising background. So right now, my challenge as global MarTech manager here is how we can drive effectiveness and efficiency by the usage of our consumer data. And also, again, thank you so much for the invitation. Let's go through the discussion. Yeah. So, hey, thank you, Don. That was a very enlightening. And, and uh, Luis, thank you. So can you tell us a bit about the digital transformation work at ABI and how does the CDP fit into that, uh, that approach? Yeah, sure. But uh, first of everything, the digital transformation reminds me of a funny story that a colleague told me that I think something like four years ago, we had our CEO trying to connect one of that old video conferences devices, you know, to at his home to do a meeting and it wasn't working well. Uh, so we had to pick up a IT guy from Sao Paulo, put him into an airplane to go to the CEO's house and make that thing work, you know. And <laughs> right now, it's crazy to imagine that this happened just a few years ago. And yes. now we are seeing people getting connected at any place of the world with stuff like that, you know, into their pockets. So uh, that being said, I think the, the company drove a strong agenda about through digital transformation, not only uh, for marketing, but also the ways that we, we work, you know, especially with the pandemic times that we are facing since 2019. So first of everything, we had to reinvent ourselves, look into our people and find ways to work remotely, hire and maintain talents and everything, and keep delivering strong results, you know. Uh, that being said, we, we also saw a massive change on the way that the consumers interact with brands, with products, and our businesses around the globe you know now everything became digital you can order a pizza you can buy beer you can buy a brand new car by the directly from your home you know so that being said i think that that is the one of the main reasons that i think it's key uh, for the business to centralize the way they collect understand and keep uh the ownership of the consumer data and also their behaviors you know and I think that we have a, such a special partnership with Treasure Data that are helping us to transform this big dream into reality, you know, by the use of job CDP. And what, what role does the CDP play in this digital transformation? I think it's clear for us to have not only a centralized platform to store our consumer records, of course, in a very compliant way. We know that we have GDPR laws into every single place of the world right now. So, it's not only just about governance and to have everything centralized, especially for us, a global company. It's key for the security purposes as well. But by having everything to the same place, we were able to understand deeply 
uh, our consumer data. You know, we're able to transform email addresses and phone numbers into real consumers with cross-brand behavior, with multiple purchase behavior, loyalty and debit. So um, by unifying everything into, into the CDP, we're able to understand very deeply the behavior of our consumers into the multiple um, contacts that they have into our digital environment right now. And with about 40 countries rolled out, how did you handle the kind of what the country would, would work on versus what was, uh, you know, came from centrally and how did you manage that process? Yeah, first we had to start with a top-down approach, you know, designing a uh, standard way that we could pilot many countries into a, a single platform, you know. Uh, but we also had a very strong partnership with every single country uh, that we have businesses. And I'm talking about more than 40 countries right now using treasure data as their CDP. So not only how to use the top-down approach, the global approach, but also how they can bring their local needs, their local stuff into their platform, you know, because we have business into, I can say, almost every single continent in the in the world right now. And we know that the markets uh, have their own characteristics, you know, and their own ways to interact with consumers. So that being said, I think we started with this top-down approach and right now we are working with the countries to apply more local stuff into the their platform and treasure data is is a very scalable platform that are helping us to do it yeah. okay thank you don do you have any particular questions yeah um uh uh for um a a b n m uh it, it is the is the existence of the cdp um empowering the uh different um uh, divisions and countries and geographies that would you consider an empowering influence? Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that because uh, yeah. that that also connects me to what you said on into your book, uh, The One to One Future. And it's crazy to think that it's almost 30 years ago yeah. because we had to find our top loyalty consumers, you know, and mm -hmm. offer the products that they want with the message that they want to receive and also at the, the right device in the right time. Right. So um, by having treasure data, we were, we we're being able to do it, you know, because right now the platform is connected into our all of our platforms uh, for digital marketing. So we have a very strong ecosystem uh, of platforms here into the Martech stack right now and treasure data is on the center of it, empowering these platforms and empowering these markets to better usage of first party data. So if, a, if, a, if one of your divisions in country A wanted to start up, let's say uh, some sort of, uh, uh, they, they wanted to, uh, um, uh, they wanted to become more, more digitally active. And so they want to install a, a, market, a, a marketing automation system, let's say. They would just plug it into the CDP, the treasury CDP? Exactly. Yeah. And also other global platforms that we have into our uh, digital marketing stack as well. But yeah. treasure data is, the, I think, the most important piece of sure. this, of this yeah, good. puzzle. You know? yeah. Luis, how did you handle the training of everyone in the various countries on how to use the CDP and, and the other MarTech? Yeah, actually, this was the training piece was one of our first challenges with the, the brand new COVID world because uh, we were planning to have a strong global tour visiting many countries, teaching people, teaching teams, marketing guys, IT, yeah. on how to work with the platform, you know. Uh, but we have to reinvent everything and do everything by Zoom. So what's, what's crazy stuff, but what's very good as well. And we have to find ways to create standard documentations and standard ways to teach people and also to keep the knowledge and spread the word of a uh, consumer data platform into uh, our local teams. So I think we trained more than 200 people by, by, by last year, more than 11 countries was into this scope. And this keeps happening every single time because the platform is so dynamic and we are applying brand new stuff every single time. So there is a strong knowledge cycle uh, being supported by, by our team here. And of course, with the partnership of Treasure Data as well.
So it plugs into a lot of different applications without a lot of trouble? Exactly, exactly. Treasure Data contains a very strong catalog of integrations. And also we could buy, we could uh, build brand new stuff in partnership with them to, to help us uh, to reach these local business goals. That's one of Treasure Data's central strengths, right, Tom? Uh, that, that in fact, there are so many APIs, there's so many uh, um, plug and play opportunities. <clears throat> Right, there's a lot of pre-built connectors which yeah. speeds the time to market, but there are also we like the challenging ones as well. So like the okay. legacy uh, connections and things like that. So yeah, okay. Yeah. So in terms of uh, you know how do how do you feel like um, everything's handled in terms of the customer privacy uh, with the CDP, and does that is it improved by having things managed centrally? Yeah, I'm pretty sure because. Um, this was one of the, our key pillars, you know, when we choose Treasure Data to become a partner mm -hmm. and when we choose to have a, a centralized consumer data platform, you know, because we are talking about a global company with thousands of uh, points, digital points to collect consumer data and interact with consumers. You know? And with GDPR in Europe, uh, LGPD here in Brazil, CCPA in North America, we had to find a strong partner that could support us uh, also uh, in how to build a very strong platform in key terms on digital privacy and everything. And also Treasure Data have the ability to connect with other privacy tools uh, that we have to collect, um, to collect the consent for cookies, for PII information and everything. So this was one of the abilities uh, that we most like into Treasure Data. How is scalable is the platform, you know, to work with a multi-country business structure like ours and multi-platform as well. Hey, John, how do you think a, a company gets the exact buy-in to kind of, um, you know, look across uh, all the different customers and really kind of manage it, wrangle that problem you were talking about? Like, what do you think is some of the things that companies have to think about? Uh, well, one of the most important issues is the mindset of the managers and directors uh, involved. Um, and I, uh, history has taught me that the employees at the company have to want this to happen. Um, um, but as it's as technology has progressed and it becomes more and more a consumer experience, everybody every time you buy at Amazon, your expectations of the next website you visit are higher, right? Um, and so as more and, and managers are consumers too, they see other companies doing stuff and they, they want to be better. Um, uh, and that's the, that's the primary um, uh, obstacle that has often had to be overcome. You, 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 you've got to have that desire among the executives to make this better. Um, I found that uh, Sometimes um, executives can be too attached to the, an old business model where they had more power uh, and they have more influence and they're, they're more knowledgeable about it uh, and they know how it works. Uh, uh, and so we are in fast moving times now and uh, we all have to be ready and willing to adapt to change and to confront it face to face, you know, honestly. Um, and change ourselves when it's called for and our views. Uh, and uh, I think that's something that, uh, that transcends business, of course. Our, our times are moving faster today than they ever did before, right? you know, uh, but I think that's very true of business. Uh, so uh, it used to be that you could, uh, uh, you could talk about the cost that was going to be incurred in a digital transformation. But today, I think it's more persuasive to talk about the cost of not participating in a digital transformation, not organizing work that works uh, works well. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, for the most part, most businesses want to do it now. It's just a question of how. Great, thank you. I know that's not a very good answer. But. <laughs> no, it's yeah, great. exactly. I don't think anyone has this answer right now. And I, and I have yeah. to, to say, it was hard to me as a, an advertising guy, you know, mm -hmm. to, to see this transformation. 
yeah. and to understand that the bias marketing, the marketing oriented only to the big idea, you know, to have the good product, this is almost over right now. Of course, we have yeah. space to have good ideas, but the challenge now is how we can unify a good idea with the good strategy that your consumer can deliver to the company, you know, by the consumer understanding. So I think this is one of the paths that we are um, yeah. moving right now to have this golden answer, let's say. I think you're, I think you're right, Luis. I think basically the, 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 the business now needs to be able to figure out how to treat different customers differently. And that's a very different proposition than having a big idea that's really good for two thirds of the customers. Okay. Uh, I want that other third also. I want to treat them, you know, the right way. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I was at Shia Day. It was a very creative agency, uh, a wonderful agency, and uh, he was a terrifically creative man. Um, but uh, uh, today, you need more than that. You, you need to be able to treat each customer individually. Exactly. Uh, with the quantity of information that we are receiving every single time, into our devices, into our cell phones and social media and everything. We have lots of good ideas, you know? Uh, we have lots mm -hmm. of brilliant stuff into the advertising market. But if you don't reach the consumer with what he wants to see, you will just become another advert, cool advertising to his social media feed, you know? He will scroll exactly. you down, basically. He'll, he'll delete, delete, delete. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And in the worst case, he will opt out from you, so we will never reach him again. So yeah. it's yeah. our nightmare yeah. right now. Well, uh, you know, uh, Seth Godin had it, uh, had a good term. He, he, he called it permission marketing, you know. Um, uh, traditional 20th century marketing was interruption marketing. We interrupt you to, to, to bring this important message. You know, we interrupt your train of thought. We, 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 we steal your t attention span uh, in order to take it over. Um, but now we need to get permission from customers. We need to we need to be on their side. We need to be much more friendly with customers than simply uh, treating them as uh, obstacles that lie between us and a product. You know. Yeah, and find seamless way to join their conversations. You know, into social media, into their exactly. lives, and everything. As Participate, as right? Exactly, in a very smooth way. So, Lise, what what are the, some of the key considerations a large company should consider when deciding whether to do a CDP or not? Like, what what are the benefits that they might achieve by doing a CDP? Um, I think there are not only benefits, but almost some something are becoming rules right now. You know, uh, especially with the data protection law. So, uh, for big companies like ours, or even small businesses. Uh, there is no space anymore to have data siloed into every single place, you know, with the agencies and, and their partners and everything. So I think that, first of all, it's key by a data privacy standpoint that you need to have a, a CDP. And also by having that, you'll be able to have a deeply understanding and a deep knowledge about your customer because everything is storing you to the same place. And you will be able to unify, to understand better uh, the behaviors of your consumers, what kind of stuff they really bought uh, from you, what kind of interactions they these consumers have with your brands or your business. You know, so I think it's key for for companies, uh, especially companies like ours, to to have a, a global CDP platform plugged into the digital marketing ecosystem right now. Thank you. And then any, um, in doing this rollout or similar rollouts of other technology, are there any lessons learned or, or uh, best practices that you, you consider important, especially in your multi-country? Yeah, actually, we're still learning a lot because this project uh, we build, CDP will, will make two years old next month. So it's still a baby for us, you know, and we, we keep learning from this platform every single day. We keep discovering interesting sites and stuff about our consumers, you know, and so a company like, like ours that have many brands and many countries, it's very interesting to see 
kind of stuff that we are doing into another country, into Canada, how we can roll out this kind of stuff to Brazil, to United States, because at the end of the day, of course, keeping the, the local marketing um, main characteristics, um, use it, the usage of, of first party data and the knowledge that you can pick up from your, your consumer is, is pretty much I don't say the same, but it's similar, you know. So by having a, a, a global platform in, in our case is also helping us how to pick up interesting stuff from one country, roll out to another about first party data usage and good strategies on, on digital yeah. marketing platforms. Yes, but I, I can imagine an even more complicated system, Luis, uh, because you don't really have very many consumers who transcend national boundaries, right? You have yeah, exactly. consumers here, consumers in the US, consumers in Europe, whatever. Um, but if you're a, let's say you are a, um, a large company in Brazil operating in many different states with different divisions operating in each of those states, and each division had its own database and its own systems and its own processes, you'd have a, a similarly complicated situation. And here, you would have customers overlapping, um, uh, and and it would magnify the problems even more, right? Exactly. No, I totally agree with you. And we are seeing this happening here in Brazil, for example. Brazil is a huge country in terms yes. of, of of twenty twenty six states, twenty six states, right? Something like that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, more than two hundred million people right now. So yes. uh, it's almost like we have different countries into the same place, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's interesting to see. Uh, that the brands can interact with different ways into different regions with the consumers, yeah. you know, because right. they have such a different behaviors and different ways to interact with the brands and consume our products. And having a CDP is also helping us in a local level to understand these characters and understand sure. better how we can interact with those people in a huge country like this. Right. Hey, hey, Luis, as an ad guy, what, what do you think about the cookie list feature and how does the CDP help set you up for the future? Uh, I think this is also, this will be also one of our biggest challenges. And I'm not saying about ABI, I'm saying about any kind of digital marketing professional, you know. Um, with Without the cookie, um, if you don't have any piece of first party data, if you don't have any kind of PII information that you can use to interact with your consumers, basically you will be in the hand of the, the, the big digital players, you know, and I can see a, a, a good future to companies that don't have any kind of, of first, first party data right now, because as you said, when the cookies is done, how you will be able to understand better ways to interact with your consumers? Um, so that's why I think the companies need to rush. We are rushing and pushing us so hard every single day to become more data driven, you know, to collect more first party data, to collect more understanding about our consumers and to find better ways to interact and keep those consumers interacting with us as well. It's, it's more important today uh, um, uh, uh, going forward when, when when companies don't have access to second and third party data, all they have is their own data. Um, uh, it's going to be really critical to to maximize the value of that data fundamentally. Um, exactly. And, yeah, I get you. Yeah, and it's not just about keeping email addresses and phone numbers, you know, because at no. the end of the day, it will be just an email address. You need to unify that. You need to understand that there is a person uh, behind that email addresses, you know, yeah. with their own behaviors, their own products and stuff that they like to do with their lives, you know. So if you don't have anything about these people, it's just a piece of an email, you know, and you can just yeah. send an email market and receive an opt-out back from this consumer. You know? Right, but you also want to make sure that not only the salespeople understand this, but the customer service people get it as well, and the dealership understands the same that you do about the particular customer, right? Exactly, exactly. So this is exploding, you know, and, and going to right. every single area of, of the companies right now. So we have a question. I'll just remind the audience too that feel free to, to put your questions in. 
so the question is, by having all the data in one place, what analytical system or campaign management tool are you using on top of the current CDP? Um, basically, we can uh, treasure data um, contains, I don't know, hundreds of, of, of connections into their catalog, you know, so you can connect stuff like Power BI, Looker, you can connect Google platforms to run uh, to run automations and more scientists work, you know, so uh, basically you can connect everything you want. There is connections to push Facebook Insights data, Twitter Insights, YouTube Insights and everything. So uh, you can use Treasure Data as well as a central piece to connect all of the Insights platform that you have from your social medias, from your DSPs, from your one-to-one -one, um, marketing platforms as well. So. This is also very nice. And do you have any standard analytical systems or campaign management tools you roll out, or is it is it kind of country by country? Depends. We have some 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 global tools that we recommend to to the zones to use, like Looker uh, for more BI standpoint. We have also uh, standard app servers, but also the the countries can find ways to connect their own platforms. You know. Uh, so this is uh, what we most like on the on the platform. Like I said, it's a scale. You know, it can fit multiple business needs uh, into different countries or even different business units you, you have on your, on your enterprise. Then the, another question is: Still haven't heard who has been the owner of Digital Transformation in a global org like ABI. Is it driven? Um, is it IT driven or business driven or something else? I think honestly, it's both. You know, it's not just about IT. It's not just about business. Is how you can find how you can have people into your company that can unify both ways of working. You know, mm -hmm. the strategical piece plus the technology piece. I think this this sum of powers uh, will enable you to be the owner of the digital transformation. So I don't think that is a single people or a single area, but I think it's a, a sum of powers um, of multiple peoples looking at the same time, but at the same place, but with your own strategies and IT pieces behind you. Was there some one person or organization that really kind of took the mantle and said, you know, I own this and we'll drive it and we're going to do it? Uh, I don't think it was just one one person in, in our case, you know, this was something that um, we as company, we were seeing appearing into into the world, you know, and, and also like Don said, COVID, uh, I think accelerated this process by, I don't know, five, 10 years in just 10 months. Um, so was was the, the focus that the company applied into it, you know, um, plus the sum of powers that I said, business and, and IT working together uh, to bring new stuff, to bring tendencies and, and how to how to dream, really dream, dream in the, the digital marketing transformation. And then remind me of your organization again. So then you have an organization that helps drive a lot of the digital transformation centrally though, right? And what, what, exactly. what's the name of your organization again? Sorry? What's your organization again? Can you describe it? Oh yes, uh, we are Anheuser Busch and Bev, uh, one of the largest um, beer companies into the world. We have businesses in almost all the continents except for Australia right now. So we are talking about more than forty countries already um, in place at, at the CDP platform right now, working with Treasure Data. Basically. It's better to say that we have business into almost every single country in the world. You know, it's hard to say uh, a single country where we do not operate right now. And then your team, your your group is, uh, you know, centrally rolls out a lot of the uh, the Martech and AdTech, right? Exactly. Uh, we are based into a global uh, structure that are plugged into every single country helping them to, to drive the our MarTech stack, you know, our standard platforms. And one of those platforms is just the CDP that I'm managing right now. Yeah. 
Great. Well, there's no more questions. Any, any, any last questions or thoughts, either Don or Louise? I feel, uh, I, I, I feel uh, that uh, we're quite justified in talking about the advantages of a, uh, uh, in a large enterprise, especially focusing on data first, customer data first, and then empowering all the different divisions and operating units and, and functions to use that data in a digital manner to make the transformation faster and quicker. Great, thank you, Don. I just see something coming in. Um, considering that AB and Bev is a manufacturing company that has no direct, or you know, I know there's some DTC, but uh, not as much direct B2C relationships. Are we really talking about marketing and branding data here instead of VG service and B2C customer experience? One issue is that CX is taken over by marketing and branding, and servicing customers becomes less of a focus if this is only about selling. Got it. Uh, actually, right now, uh, we accelerated so much our own uh, e-commerce platforms last year. We saw a huge increase of our e-commerces because basically the people was locked up, locked up at home and they had to purchase beer online, you know. So uh, we are talking about both, actually. I think uh, that having a, a CDP can help you to do any kind of first party marketing first party data driven marketing you know uh either for brands or e-commerces i think that you can have benefits by using a, a cdp as part of key part of your digital marketing transformation tool and i might add to that um, um when i talk to business to business audiences i uh, just change the word experience to success you have to focus exactly. on each different client's success because that's what a business cares about uh, but the principles are fundamentally similar you want a frictionless um, experience of using the product and service in order to make it easier for the customer easier and easier yeah. customer or consumers yeah anything you want to to do thank you so I see a, a question about how is the presenting company relevant to digital transformation? I'll summarize. I'm not sure which which company. Um, so Treasure Data CDP often underpin underpins the digital transformation by providing connections across the different technologies. With that, you know, so the customer data can uh, can reside in one place and can be used by each technology. Uh, AB and Bev uh, use the Treasure Data CDP as one of the key pillars for the digital transformation, and then. Don's, Don's company is is involved with customer experience and, and specializes in customer experience. And obviously all of those digital touch points that are uh, out uh, changed due to digital transformation are a part of the customer experience. So that's that's kind of Don's, mm -hmm. Don's angle on that. Will we be sending out Don's deck to those who have joined Don? Will we be able to provide a, um, either send out or provide a link to the deck? Sure, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And then uh, last question I think we'll take and then we'll wrap up. ABI uh, in all continents except Australia, even Antarctica? Yeah, except all, all Australia and Antarctica. Let's be like that. <laughs> That's where the beer will really be cold. But I'm sure the, the product really might reach that. You mentioned that you operate in certain countries, but also the product is is, is reaching further countries. So, so I guess it depends. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. This has been really enlightening. I, I actually learned a lot too. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, thank you guys for this invitation. This is a wonderful discussion. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Yeah.